uh, hey guys and welcome to Diabetic 365 to the new episode. Today we have a very special guest. Uh, he is Ethan Lewis from Gluco Brands. Uh, he has been type 1 diabetic from past 11 years. He was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at an age of 12 years and now he is 23, 24. So he has been diagnosed um, when he was 12. So he's going to share us all the stories, ups and downs that he faced from the past decade, 10 years. And he's also the co founder of Gluco Brands um, uh, that's, uh, that's used by type 1 diabetes when they go into hypoglycemia. And he's going to explain all that stuff for us. And uh, welcome, Ethan. Hey, BJ, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to have you, uh, entrepreneur like you, on this show. Um, so before going to your product or before going to your entrepreneur uh, ventures, so uh, I would like to ask you your first question. Tell me your first diagnosis at any age of uh, 12 in Connecticut when you were in Connecticut in your school. Sure, sure. So I was diagnosed um, at the age of 12. It was about a week before I was going back to school from summer vacation. Um, I'd been sick for about two, two and a half weeks with flu-like symptoms. I was drinking a lot. I was tired. Um, it was the classic diabetes syndrome. And luckily, it raised a red flag for my mom. She did a little research online and um, took me to my doctor, who at that point um, did a blood sugar test. I don't remember the number, but it was certainly high enough. And um, told me that I had to go to the hospital, and I was now a uh, type 1 diabetic. So um, it was a lot to take in at the time, but frankly, I didn't, um, didn't really realize what I was in for until I actually got a few months into it. So there are no one in, in your family who is diabetic before? No, no, I was, I was the lucky one. I was the first one at the time. Since then, I've had a, a family member who was diagnosed. Okay. Um, but at the time, it was totally new to our family. Okay, so now you're in Tampa, but, but before when you were in Connecticut and attending the school and all this stuff. So how was the school phase for you? Was it very difficult? Uh, I mean, the whole life changed from the day you were diabetic. So how did you adjust to the new life and how did you make that the new lifestyle change from then on? Yeah, it was difficult being diagnosed, um, just entering into my teen years. Um, you know, there were certainly lots of changes going on. And um, with school, um, the, the diagnosing, diagnosing part was tough. What was tougher was actually realizing that there was a lot of things to do to take care of my diabetes um, and do it well. And to realize that it was important to start then and um, to, to continue on for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So coming to the, uh, when you moved to Tampa, and uh, I know it's a pretty hot place there, and uh, you went to um, live alone, you know, um, in the college without any of your parents uh, backing you up. So uh, when you moved to your uh, Tampa, and you had new friends in the dorm and all that stuff, but were you comfortable enough and were you confident enough when you're leaving your parents to go to the end of the country? I thought I was fine. Um, my parents made me tell my two roommates from uh, freshman year, uh, the first day that I got there, and I was never um, a, a big spokesperson, at least as a kid, in terms of I have diabetes and I would let everybody know. I'd really try and hide it. So that part was tough. Outside of my two roommates uh, freshman year, I really didn't tell anyone else, and I learned that um, that was actually a mistake that I should have been telling more people, the people who were close to me, my friends. So when you were in uh, school, like how did your friends take, receive you? Um, you know, when they told, when you told them that uh, you were type one diabetic. Yeah, I think for them, um, for some of them, I certainly answered a few questions because sometimes I'd act a little bit funny and a little bit goofy. Now, is of course from low blood sugars, but they didn't know what was going on, so they just thought I was like, acting a little bit funny. Mm -hmm. um, but they certainly saw me in the same respect. Um, and uh, you know we became closer, uh, I think, because of it. Frankly. No. Oh, okay. So uh, the other thing is uh, uh, living there in the dorm and living in the college might be might be uh, difficult because uh, you don't have the same level of food or um, what the diabetic should eat. It it wouldn't be that 
qualitative enough uh, for a diabetic. So how did you adjust to the life in college and also uh, in your dorm or in your school? Absolutely. So the eating part is probably the toughest for most people who have diabetes, especially type 1, going to college. Um, the college certainly had a variety of options as far as food goes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it was the right food. It was what uh, I should have been eating. So it was tough. You know, I had to make the mental choice to eat a certain way, stay away from certain foods. Um, it was always a constant balancing act. But uh, I came out of there unscathed and um, uh, enjoyed my time. So uh, what about the stress? You go through a lot of stress when you're in college, during exams or, you know, um, semester. Or so. so how did you um, deal with that? The, the stress was probably one of the toughest parts. Um, I find that stress and diabetes are, um, you know, they're constantly battling each other, whether it's making your, your blood sugars go high or the adrenaline's making you go low. Well. Um, the test taking part, the stress of college, really put my blood sugars through a roller coaster as it would for many people. Um, but it's, it's part of it and I think I just learned to deal with the stress better as I took on more responsibility and um, you know it helped, it helped even things out for me. That's very good. Um, so this is regarding your entrepreneurial life um, at 16 years. So uh, I read that um, when you were 16, that means you were already di uh, diabetic at that time. So you started this business on the small crackers. And later, um, you also uh, started a business when you moved to Tampa on Swave cards, the discount cards um, for local businesses, and donated the profits to JDRF. And now, uh, within a year or two years of graduating from um, the university, you started the Gluco brands, and now you're donating some part of the profits to the uh, type 1 research. So uh, there are two questions here, basically. Though you know that type 1 diabetic um, is kind of a lot to take in, but how did you leap into entrepreneur adventure? How did you get the courage to do something different, to choose a different path, um, apart from having type 1 and maintaining the type 1? That's one thing. The second thing is about your donations, about your raising the charities to JDRF or whether to it be the research. So um, can you please uh, give, give us your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Well, I tell most people, and some people think I'm a little bit crazy, but I tell people that I credit my um, my success in business and um, for inspiring me to become so entrepreneurial at a young age thanks to my diabetes. I think diabetes has taught me that um, uh, there's no time like the present and that you really have to be proactive in, in going after your goals and achieving them. So I started my first business when I was 16, it was a manufacturing food business and now we've made a progression into this uh, diabetes business called Gluco Brands. Um, the thing that's remained constant um, for the last six years or so in my life has been the importance, feeling the importance to give back to the diabetes community, not just in awareness and donations, but actually giving um, you know products that make life easier uh, living with diabetes. Um, it, it's been a it's been a clear choice for me, as I think we're all in this for the same reason. No matter what we're doing in the diabetes field, we're all in it for a cure and we're all in it to make life easier. So um, the two go hand in hand for me and uh, I've really enjoyed the process. So what made to motivate you and take advantage and accomplish your goals or aspirations? You know, it was just... Um, um, Again, I, th I think it was it was the diabetes that always kept me in line in terms of, um, you know, using my time wisely in school and out of school. And I've seen, you know, I've seen other people become successful at young ages and, uh, you know, having high aspirations in life, there's no time to start like the present. So uh, I figured at 16 I'd start then. And um, ever since then, it's really uh, been a passion and a hobby to build and grow businesses. Um, so for me, it's always fun. The other factor that I liked in your um, in your business is uh, in your website. You clearly stated the amount of revenues you are getting. I mean, 
at least the revenues you're making and the amount of profits that you're donating to JDRF or diabetes research, you are so transparent when all the other brands, all the other you know people who are in the diabetes, whether it's the pharmacy industry or whether it's been you know diabetes supplies industry, they they are trying to take advantage of people. They are trying to take advantage of the system, and uh, but you're being so transparent. What made you to be so transparent in your business when all the others are, um, you know, trying to just mint money or make money? But I think, you know, from my, from my perspective, it's, it's kind of an easy call because at the end of the day, I have type 1 diabetes and I want to make it better. I want to make it easier, frankly, for everybody out there, including myself. Um, you know, we, we do show the amount of um, donations on our website, for example, um, when a person purchases one of our products, they um, ha actually have to choose to donate to one of three charities. Those are ADA, JDRF, and DRI. Um, and it's their choice because, after all, it's their money. It's their purchase. Um, and I really think that there is a social responsibility to be transparent. Uh, there's social responsibility to conduct uh, good business and uh, to give back to this diabetes community. That's very... Um that's very nice. So tell us a few things that you learned hard way. <laughs> about business or about diabetes? Oh, well, about diabetes. You know, the thing that I've learned the hard way is that as independent as I am, um, you always need a really strong support network, whether it's friends, family, or loved ones, um, to kind of you know, know what's going on with you, to be in tune with your diabetes, in tune with your diabetes care, and always be one call away or one step away if you need anything. I would love to admit that I can do everything on my own, which I like to think I can, um, but sometimes you know, it's just good to have those people in your life uh, to give you a little bit of support and, encourage, and encouragement. Um, uh, the other thing I've learned with diabetes is life is so much easier if you do the right things. That means testing your blood sugar often, uh, you know, dosing correctly with the insulin, eating a certain way, as much as I would hate to admit that um, you know, doing the right thing makes life easier, it's totally true. Um, and I find that when I take good care of my diabetes, all the other aspects of my life balance out and I'm doing better overall. And your final message to the diabetic community out there? I think that um, having diabetes uh, if you have it, you can use it as a source of inspiration like I have um, for creating businesses. You can use it as a source for inspiration to do things with your life, um, anything in fact, and use it to, um, to really push you forward and push you to the top of your class and never let it hold you down. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for being on the show and sharing your thoughts on your brand and also um, your type 1 diabetes life from the past 10 years. Thank you so much, Ethan, and you have a nice day, and also I wish you all the best in your Gurko brands. Thanks, Vijay. It's a pleasure talking with you. Take care. You too.